Welcome back everyone, this is Dan, and thank you for coming back for the Red Strings Club. So, this is, uh, it's, well for me, it's been a few days, uh, maybe more than a few days since I was able to come back to the game, but I've been, I've been itching to, just itching to come back, because we left at a point where we were starting to get a lot of intrigue, like a lot of new characters, a lot of like mysterious people being really mysterious. <laughs> and so we're starting to get into the mystery of um, the evil corporations. I guess maybe the word evil is redundant for some of the people out here. <laughs> but um, plans are moving, uh, people are moving, schemes are moving, and secrets are being uncovered so I think at this point um, I think we're just things are moving like we're rolling down the hill hopefully we get to a point where just I don't know just things pop off I know they're gonna pop off really soon because like all these uh, all these parties and factions are coming together meeting up at a certain point and just we're, we're just like, at the, I feel like we're just right at the crux of where it starts to happen. And um, yeah, I'm hoping to get maybe a couple of sessions or a, a couple of video sessions out of this. So we'll see where we go. I hope you guys will enjoy and follow me into this adventure. Hi, hon. Oh, you finally made up your mind? Yeah, I'm all for going with them with all we got. Listen. I'm in the middle of a del delicate situation here. Good news is that I found COO Johanna Seftis. Bad news is she's about to jump off North Bridge. Oh. I'll see what I can do. I've got an ace up my sleeve. Since you asked me to track her down, I asked Proxima for a backdoor to her rebel implants. I'm gonna try sending some antidepressant subroutines to tame this kitty. Oh. Okay. Gotta leave you now. Bye. So, uh, the honey, I think, is um, Donovan. I think Brandeis and Donovan are together, I think. And I'm not sure where he got this antidepressant stuff, but we'll see, right? Quite the view, huh? Nothing. You picked a beautiful place to end your life. All those little blue and yellow squares full of people who don't care about each other. Then a bunch of fools like us who won't stop fighting over the right to dictate the way they live. I wish her to also disappear into thin air. I need to get closer to her from jumping. Oh, I need to get closer to keep her from jumping. Approaching her will increase her tension, so I should probably talk her down before moving in. Gotta pay attention to her body language. If she's too anxious, putting some distance between us will definitely help. I could also hack her implants to calm her, but I shouldn't abuse this or I could fry her. Fine. Let's put some soul into this. Alright, um... She seems very... Um... I don't want to say chill, but she doesn't seem like anything's going on right now. So maybe what we'll do is... Chill Pulse, 100% loaded. Oh, I think this is the hack. Uh, explain what's going on with her implants. Use Ariadne's knowledge. Maybe we could start with that. Because she was the one that um, that we had uh, Akara use the implant for just before Ariadne got, you know, taken out. So maybe this is something that we could explain to her and this is why she's feeling the way she's feeling. And maybe that can help... Uh, of, help her cope with how she's feeling which you know on that subject making making and changing the way people feel it can come up with this like, basically like this because um, having um oh what was what's the name of the, the corporation dude but uh what was a supercontinent supercontinent trying to change people's uh perceptions of their emotions and stuff this is essentially what they're doing. They're, they're making it so that people are feeling things that they don't feel like they should be feeling, like on a subconscious level. And look at how she's acting out here. 
and and yet they think that this is a great idea this is an idea that they really want to push out and yet you know somebody else hacked in and made her uh implants have her feel a certain way and she's about to end her life let's go with this what if i told you i know why you're going through this what do you mean i know why you lost it and escaped from supercontinent what why why would you know something like that what do you even know about me oh don't get me wrong we just met all right i barely know you but i know what's producing the sudden change in your behavior proxima infiltrated supercontinents implant clinics and installed some rebel upgrades in you no that can't that's why i full disclosure i happen to be very acquainted with the internal workings of those implants it can't override your thoughts but the program explores the subconscious for certain ideas rebellion compassion then brings them to the conscious a dirty, a dirty trick in my opinion but to be fair the program can't produce thoughts that aren't your own whatever you're feeling now it's not artificial these are your original ideas, but they've been prioritized, so you can't avoid them anymore. Oh! So it's not making her change the way that she's feeling. According to Brandeis, it's making her prioritize or make her feel even more deeply the things or the thoughts that she had in the back of her head that she wasn't even aware of. But that still seems so disgusting to me i don't know it just seems so forced and terrible i do i don't know that i could condone that either so nice of you to explain that kind of bug that it was that bit me but what did i do care now what do i care now this is my new mind ah the thing is that i not only know how it works i know how to deactivate it if you come with me, I'll happily set you free from its influence. You do that? Yeah, I'm not a fan of mental manipulation, so I'll do it for free. Hmm. Okay, I'll think about it. Good, she looks stable. I should move closer. Alright, we'll step forward. Let's move in. Hmm, losing her a little now. Uh, let's let's dialogue. Let's Let's talk, you and me. Do you mind me asking why you're deciding to end it all? I've lost my way. I let everyone I care about lose their way too. Supercontinent set out to change the world. Money wasn't the reward, but the means to the end. Now the objective's been twisted so many times I can't remember when it, I stopped caring. Okay, so your life could use a new direction then. Or don't give up, explain that to them. Well, if she's feeling rebellion and compassion, maybe getting her to actually subconsciously cope with that and play with it and explore that, maybe that would help uh, with how she's feeling. Because if she's feeling this deep down, maybe that is something that she needs to do. We could tell her to explore a new direction, but then she'd still be in the same place where she was. She wanted to make a change to the world, and everyone else around her was making these changes that maybe weren't counter to what the original goal was, but certainly not uh, conducive to them. Don't give up. Explain that to them. It's no use. The new CEO is set on a very specific objective. Supercontinent. There's no redemption for them now. Joanna's close to her limit. Okay, okay, okay. Um, who? Let's, uh... Damn it. Um, maybe we'll, we'll chill pulse her. Okay, let's inject some antidepressant scripts into her implants. Nice. Almost stable now. Alright, let's dialogue. Northbridge has always been good for getting some perspective. Inside that concrete maze, it's easy to lose yourself in data streams and notifications. 
We can barely see where we're putting our feet anymore. Hell, I've just missed two chats from my brain drive since we started talking. But then being here, looking at that rock floating up in the ocean, we could just start walking the other way and leave the city behind us, huh? It isn't that easy. You bet. There's too much of ourselves cemented into the foundation of those skyscrapers. But think about it. What would you lose? Money? Power? Responsibility? Identity? The weight of the fate of civilization? <laughs> yeah. That too. <laughs> Good, she looks stable. I should move closer. Alright, let's 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 step forward. Let's move in. Alright, she's... Alright, losing her a little now. Let's dialogue, let's dialogue. What's your name? I'm Brandeis. Why are you doing this? Well, um... I mean... If she's the COO, she's not stupid. So she knows that there's, there's some motive behind it. Maybe we should just be... Like, up front. Maybe she would understand that. Like, if someone were to say, I'm a hero, I mean... That's that's your opinion. That that doesn't necessarily gel with the person you're talking to, and it's an ideal. I mean, that ideal is your perspective, which may or may not mesh with what the other person's perspective is. So maybe we just go with the truth, and that maybe that's something that is just easier to handle. And also, if Supercontinent with the new new CEO is doing something that she is conflicted about to the point where she wants to end it all perhaps this is something that she would entertain helping to take down supercontinent i need you for taking down supercontinent your conscience is killing you because of what the company is trying to pull off right we'll use your help to fight them and you'll get to redeem yourself i just can't face them She's close to her limit. Okay, okay. Um, let, let's let's uh, let's dialogue. Let's dialogue. Listen, are you with Proxima? I'm not part of their organization, but we collaborate quite often. You must think that I doomed the city, right? Um, I mean, she kind of does give herself too much credit. To say that the city was doomed long ago maybe isn't going to be something that helps her with her conscience. To say... To say that, like, everything was doomed from the beginning, and that you had no say in the matter, maybe for someone who is depressed, maybe that just reinforces the idea. And maybe we can tell her that she gave herself too much credit. Maybe that's where we go from there. So let's give it a try, I guess. Bah. You give yourself too much credit. There are countless factors all over the world working relentlessly as we speak to F us on this planet. And from my point of view, if you have enough of a conscience to be jumping off this bridge out of guilt, I'm sure the sum of your actions as Supercontinent can't add up to match the damage of the average money-making bastard. But SPW... Oh, we're taking that down, didn't I tell you? How? Come with us and you'll see. Nice, almost stable now. Alright. Alright, so... Let's, um... Maybe we'll dialogue again? Both sides of the railing scare me. One is the other end. But the other is even more terrifying. Yeah, um... I think she's talking about one the end the utter end you know death but then living and trying to live with your consequences living with having to fight and to struggle is also terrifying i mean we we try to cope and we try to find ways around it but it doesn't take away from the fact that it's very scary the world is scary but so is so is ending it all uh, both are terrifying, but I don't know. The the fact that you can't change anything, you can't redeem after death, just the finality of all, just 
I don't know. I in personally, I feel like that's even scarier. Stay on the railing, then. That was a metaphor. I know. Stay on the railing. Life's not binary, Joanna. When you set foot on the ground, you don't need to go back to face some sort of redemption ordeal. Yeah, you don't have to become a revolutionary. You could have a hamburger, ride a bike, play a video game. I mean, you could do something else. Being a revolutionary, I feel like pushing that on her sounds or seems like to me it's like you know putting more pressure on someone who uh, is already feeling the pressure of the world maybe doing something that is inconsequential overall to the world maybe that's something that it's like here is something you could do you could not affect anything just you don't have to make the choice you could just choose to be in the middle do do I was essentially nothing. Have a hamburger, ride a bike, play a video game. There are plenty of things, more important even, than our ridiculous war over civil welfare. To play a video game. God, it's been ages since I logged into Steam. <laughs> For me, it's, uh, let me see, how long is this? For? It's been just under 20 minutes <laughs> since I logged into Steam. Okay. You should play more. Having fun really puts everything else into perspective. And I'm being dead serious here. Never imagined I'd be talking about Steam while pondering offing myself. But you do have a point. <laughs> Good, she looks stable. I should move closer. Alright, let's do that. Step forward. Let's move in. Hmm, losing her a little now. Alright, alright. Let's let's dialogue. Let's dialogue. I heard about the girl who died at our clinics. I woke up uneasy that morning already, but hearing of her demise is what made me flip. Did you know her? Yes. Her name was Ariadne. She was a really good friend of mine. God, I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Saying she had it coming doesn't make anybody feel any better. That's so judgmental. And for somebody who feels like the judgment is upon themselves, just changing where the the blame goes doesn't do anything. But maybe telling her that Ariadne died doing what she loved, maybe, maybe that is a comfort to let her know that even though she died, it was all in an effort to do what she had loved, what she wanted, and that, you know, despite no longer being able to do it, she lived the, her life the way that she wanted, doing what she wanted. You know, YOLO, kind of, you know? Although not to the not to the same degree that, like, the, the internet wants you to, like, to go with. Like, yeah, you only live once, but that doesn't mean that it should be short. And that it should be inconsequential. It's not an excuse to do any and everything without the fear of reprisal, without the fear of consequence. In to me, you only live once tells you that you know don't allow fear of the unknown, the fear to trying something new, and uh, your your higher brain function of like trying to you know live an image don't let those things impede you from doing things that would bring you joy things that you would love like you know maybe flying is a fear of yours but you want to see uh, another country you want to go um, you want to go touring to maybe a major historical site. Don't allow your fear to rule you. Maybe don't fly. Maybe instead find some other means of transport. Go do the thing that, you know, is going to make your life worth living. To not have the regrets. Not to, not to say, oh, YOLO, you only live once. I'm going to go do something completely irresponsible that hurts not only myself but hurts the people around me and the people I love. No. To me, YOLO is 
enrich your life without the fear that things will go wrong from bringing the joy and contentment to your life. And maybe this is the sentiment where we're going here. At least I hope that this is the, the direction that the game is intending. But you know, Ariadne died doing what she loved. If not supercontinent, we'd just pick another threat. It's in our blood. Some people can't stop fighting. I'd rather die in a heist than on a couch. What a way to burn through life, says the one standing on North Bridge's railing. Heh. Good, she looks stable. I should move forward. Yeah, let's let's move a little bit. Let's move in. Hmm. Losing her a little now. Alright, alright. Let's let's dialogue. Let's dialogue. How does someone end up being COO? I mean, is that what you wanted to be when you were a kid? Huh. Not at all. I wanted to be a soldier. Really? I can't picture someone as compassionate as you killing people on the battlefield. Well, I wanted to be a secret agent, saving the world in stealthy, non-lethal ways. But when I came to know what actually armies were about, well, I decided to take the fight to an office. Before joining Supercontent, I ran my own humanitarian aid company. That's cool. What changed? What do you mean? Why did you join the corporate gang? Because Supercontinent is different. What we've become today is just a corrupted version of our most sincere desire to heal society. But I guess I'm proud of most things we did for the city. Yeah, you almost had me fooled when you fully dismantled the corporate city police. Or corrupt city police. My bad. I'm so sorry. How have I been this blind? I feel like an idiot for buying into this SPW scam. I wish you could stop it all. We will. I promise. Good, she looks stable. I should move closer. Yep, let's step forward. Let's move in. Brandeis. Hmm? I think I'm in love with you. Whoa. Didn't see that one coming. I think I'm all messed up inside. Looking at the waves, the rippling reflection of the city. I see myself as a tiny shadow on the bridge's mirrored image. I don't know who I am anymore. It doesn't make sense anymore. Life. But then my chest is burning. I can't deny this feeling. And if I'm going to die, why should I deprive myself this last confession of love? I love you, Brandeis. Come on, you don't even know who I am. I feel like you're the first human I've had an honest talk with since I was a kid. <laughs> what a lame existence. I guess I should shut up then already and just jump, huh? Hmm. Man, this- that's- Ah... I mean, do whatever your heart tells you to. I don't know. I don't think that's the I don't think that's the call. Saying no, come with me. Is that playing with her emotions, telling her that you know, come with me? And being selfish doesn't seem like the right thing in this moment. You know, before you jump, tell me how to do this, you know, uh, defeat the company. That doesn't seem right. I don't know, like, she she seems really, and forgive my pun, on edge. I'm not sure if we should tell her to come with us. It feels like, it feels like, you know, she just confessed her love saying that she's about to, to jump and that's why she wanted to, you know, do with what her heart tells her. But at this moment, does her heart tell her she wants to jump? I mean, certainly her brain is telling her that she wants to do that. But does her heart tell her that that's what she wants? I mean, I think we should tell her to come with us. You know, as they say in the Terminator, you know, come with me if you want to live. Let's go with that one. I think... Man, I'm... <sighs> second-guessing myself so much guys 
I hope you are never in this position. I get unless you know you're trained for it. But you know, if if someone is threatening this level of harm to themselves, definitely please get them help, like professional help. They are trained for stuff like this. Like you know, for me to especially like. For a stranger, I, I would never be able to convince someone not to 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 do this, to go through with it. There's a lot that goes into the thought process for these people. And there's a lot of things that might trigger a person. And there are there are certainly ways and things that you can say that will help, but if you're not a trained professional, you wouldn't know what those things were. You're making all these guesses like we are right now. And I really don't know. I, I've been I'm, like, even just given the actual things to say to turn the tide, I don't know which ones are the correct ones. Uh, I do know that if I say the wrong thing, it's going to end badly. And you can never know. I'm going to do this one, though. No. Come with me. Do you love me, too? Not in a romantic way. But hell, why not? I love you, Johanna. And I know a lot of people who can have honest conversation, who you can have honest conversation with every day. We're a loving family, the revolutionary lot. Why don't you give your life to us instead of the ocean? I feel like we can be better hosts than those rocking neon waves. Ah, take me with you. Oh, we kept her from jumping off the bridge. Look at that. I'm proud of us, guys. I'm proud of us. Wow. All right. Oh, man. That was crazy. What a scene. Again, I hope you guys never have to deal with something like that. That is, I could not, I honestly could not deal with having somebody's life in my hands like that and not not being able to save them and them perishing right in front of me that would change me and my existence forever I know it and I, I've been fortunate I've never been put in this situation but wow what what a shock to the system you know um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a short break here uh, for myself. I will record another session in, uh, from here. So this will be where we end off with this video. I hope that you guys have, um, I guess, maybe not the word enjoyed, but uh, appreciated this video. Um, please, if you've gotten this far, um, why don't you, if, if you, if you were unsure that I was going to get through this, uh, click the like button. If you thought that I was going to have uh, done this situation wrong, please click the dislike button. And if you were like unsure with my flip-flopping, uh, put in the comments unsure. I would love to see the statistics on this of how many people are watching and where you thought I was going or how my progress was as I was doing it. I'd be really interested to tell. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you in the next one because you know it's going to be even more of the same of this. But I will see you there. And until then, bye.